tonight, 15,000 cheering fans will pack the arena in Boston, Massachusetts to watch a giant basketball doubleheader. In that cheering crowd, sitting in row C, seat 11, will be a modest 77-year-old man. Those fans won't know that he's made possible the game they're watching. But you're going to meet him now. Horizon Airlines has brought him here all the way from Lawrence, Kansas. Dr. James A. Naismith, the inventor of basketball. Dr. Naismith, how did you happen to invent the game? Well, Mr. Heater, it was the winter of 1891 when I was a physical instructor at Springfield College right here in Massachusetts. We had a real New England blizzard. For days, the students couldn't go outdoors, so they began roughhousing in the halls. We tried everything to keep them quiet. We tried tying them up. We tried showing them pornography, but they got bored with that. Something had to be done. One day, I had an idea. I called the boys to the gym, divided them up into teams of nine, and gave them an old soccer ball. I showed them two peach baskets I nailed up at both ends of the gym, and I told them the idea was to throw the ball into the opposing team's peach basket. I blew a whistle, and the first game of basketball began. And what rules did you have for your new game, Dr. Naismith? Well, I didn't have enough. And that's where I made my big mistake. The boys began dribbling between their legs and doing things I never intended to happen. One boy grabbed the ball and dunked it in the basket before doing a celebratory dance. As you can imagine, I was mortified. When I added a rule to prohibit excess displays of emotion, the game went along much more smoothly. But, much to my dismay, the histrionics kept on. Some of the boys started making passes without looking and dribbling behind their back. It was only a matter of time before the game became an outlet for this sort of exhibitionist behavior. The sort of thing we associate with deviancy and drug use. After that first match, I began to worry that basketball was an exciting sport for young men to play. But the boys kept nagging me to let them play again. So I made up some more rules. The most important one being no dunking of the basketball, but fancy dribbling of any kind. We tried the game out with no rules, focusing on the fundamentals. Nobody was shown up this time. We had a fine, clean sport. Ten years later, basketball was being played all over the country. And the whole day was started with a couple of beach baskets and the need for peace and quiet. It just goes to show you what you can do if you have to. Indeed it does.